Glory to God. You are welcome to, to this service. And today, before we start this wonderful point that the Lord is giving to us, we want to pray first. Oh, Heavenly Father, we give you glory and honor. We thank you for all that you have done in our lives. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace, your presence. Father, today, we, we are so excited to receive your word. Thank you for opening our ears to hear your voice. And let us obey, help us by your grace to be obedient sons and daughters. We want to please you, we want to be like Jesus. So today, Father, cause us to be transformed, to be more like Jesus. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You remember that we started uh, speaking about the faithfulness of the Holy Spirit. Uh, indeed, God is faithful. That means the Father is faithful. Jesus is faithful. Um, but when it comes to the uh, Holy Spirit, it's not obvious in our understanding that the Holy Spirit is faithful. It's easier to conceive the faithfulness concerning the Father and the Son. But we need to have a clearer biblical scriptural based understanding of the faithfulness of the Holy Spirit. And uh, we are focusing on it concerning the Spirit of God because we receive the instruction by the Lord to teach the mission of the Holy Spirit. The mission of the Holy Spirit. And the way he wanted it to be done is in a way that the character of the Holy Spirit will appear better, that we may grow in the knowledge of the Holy Spirit in his character, in the ways by which he does what he is doing. So um, to introduce that, we started to look at the faithfulness of the Holy Spirit toward the Father, and toward the Son. We did that in the first video. Uh, the second teaching was the faithfulness of the Holy Spirit toward us. How he is faithful in what he is doing to us. And today we'll continue in that direction uh, to look at the faithfulness of the Holy Spirit in certain key points uh, that concern the mission of the Holy Spirit toward us. So we are using the example of the people, the children of Israel, after they left Israel and came uh, to a certain point, Moses was summarizing the journey in the book of Deuteronomy. And in chapter 7, Moses gave uh, one instruction one fundamental key instruction that we want to underline through the first nine verses of chapter 7 of Deuteronomy. So, but before underlining that key point of the instruction, we want to talk about the context. The context here in the chapter 7, verse 1, we read, it was after. Uh, Moses was summarizing, When the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land whither thou goest, goes, to possess it, and has cast out many nations before thee, the Hittite and the Girgashite and the Amorite and the Canaanite and the Perizzite and the Evite and the Jebusite, seven nations greater and mightier than you. So in that context, God is doing something taking his people to the new land and fighting their battles. And then he said in verse 2 that and when God shall deliver them into thy hand before, thy, before thee, thou shalt smite them 
Okay, he gave some instructions how to deal with these people. And also, he said to not make covenant. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor show the mercy unto them. And that covenant include also the covenant of marriage. So in, chap in verse 3, Moses spoke about to not have marriage with, marriages with them. Because in verse 4, God said they will turn them and corrupt them. In verse 4. And uh, they will turn away their son from the Lord, from following the Lord. And verse 5, Moses gave what God said, how God said they should deal with them. All the destruction of their evil altar, breaking down their images, and so forth. And verse 6, thou shalt, uh, uh, Moses giving the reason what God wanted of them, how, how God has selected them. God has selected them to make them a holy people into the Lord. Thy God. The Lord has chosen thee to be a special people into himself above all that are upon the face of the world, of the earth. And the reason why God did that in verse 7, Moses uh, um, explained that. He said, It's not because you were more in number than any people, but the Lord did not set his love upon you nor choose you because of that, your number, for you were the fewest of all people. But in verse 8, the reason why God, because the Lord loved you, because of his love, and because that he keep the oath which he has sworn into your fathers. Hallelujah. So we see, until the point where Moses is explaining the reason why uh, uh, God has chosen them and is fighting for them. Then the charge now, the charge that Moses, that God is giving to them through Moses, is found in verse 9. He said, God want, concerning God himself, God want them to know him. Know therefore that the Lord, thy God, he is God the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandment to a thousand generations. This is the principle. This is the key principle that explain how we should that uh, uh, commend, how we should grow in the knowledge of the Lord. We should know, know that God, the Lord is unique, is incomparable, you don't have another God, but He is God. He is the self-existing. So we see that, and also His character here. And one of the threat, the character that is given here of God is that He is faithful, and is because it, because of that faithfulness that we can count on the covenant. We can uh, be confident in God. If God was not faithful, there is no confidence in whatsoever. But because he is faithful, we know God keep his covenant. God is a covenant. So the relationship that we have with God based on covenant, love and covenant, is, is, is real, is effective, fulfills his purposes. Because of the faithfulness of God. Because of the faithfulness. And when he said God is faithful, the faithful God, and he has, and he's merciful, he's not just speaking about the Father and the Son, but also the Holy Ghost. So he's saying the Father is faithful, Jesus is faithful, but the Holy Ghost is faithful also. And to make that... Uh, uh, great in our spirit man, in our heart, the faithfulness of the spirit. We must look at uh, certain point 
concerning the mission of the Holy Ghost and how he is faithful in fulfilling them. That's an instruction. No, therefore, because of all that has been underlined before. No. There is a knowing that we should have concerning God and his faithfulness. So what about now the faithfulness of the Spirit? We want to introduce, uh, continue rather, by giving seven points of the mission of the Holy Ghost in, through which the Spirit of God is faithful. The first, mission, the first point is in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10 to 12, we see here that there are things that eyes have not seen, ear have not heard, things that have not entered in the heart of men. But God has revealed them into us by his spirit. You see that? It's by the spirit of God that we come to, to receive revelations of things of God that we have no way to, uh, to know them. Our eyes cannot contemplate these things. Our ears cannot. Even our heart has, has not received these things. But the Spirit of God is faithful to reveal these things to us. And the Bible continues to say, For the Spirit searcheth all things. Verse 10. The Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. Verse 10. Then, the previous. For the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God, the deep things of God. So there is no way to know the deep things of God but by the Spirit of God. So the Spirit of God is the one because He's faithful. He will, he will take us into the depth of the things of God. He will move us from the superficiality into the depth. And going from depth to depth of God is the Spirit of God who does that. And he's revealed to, he is a, a faithful to reveal that. So, in our interaction with the Holy Spirit, in our um, uh, communion with the Holy Ghost, we must be talking about these things that are depth, that are deep concerning God. We must be yearning for these deep things that the Holy Ghost is faithful to reveal to us. is by revelation. That's the first point. He is faithful to reveal these things to us, the Word of God is saying. For he searches all things, yea, the deep things of God, and he revealed them unto us, God said, by his Spirit. So the second point where we see the faithfulness of God, of, of the Holy Ghost, is concerning the mystery of Christ. The Holy Spirit revealed the mysteries of Christ to us. According to Ephesians 3, verse 3 to 5, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 3 to 5, Apostle Paul said that how that by revelation, you see, that's by the Spirit of God, by revelation he made known unto me the mystery as I wrote afore in few words. Verse 5, whereby which in other ages which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men as it is now revealed into his holy apostle and prophet by the Spirit. So the mystery of Christ is the Spirit of God that revealed them to us, it to us. And the Spirit of God, according to the word, is faithful to reveal this mystery of Christ to us. 
We must, we must desire it knowing that as we desire, as we seek the mystery of Christ, the Spirit of God will reveal to us. Christ is a mystery, and it's by the Spirit that we can know Him. That's the second uh, mission of the Holy Ghost, where He's faithful to reveal the things of God to us. And, verse, and the third point, where we see the faithfulness of the Spirit in the Scripture, is found in 2 Corinthians 3, verse 17. 2 Corinthians 3, verse 17. Now the Lord is that Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So the Spirit of God is faithful to bring us liberty. He, his presence brings to us liberty. His presence brings deliverance. His presence brings healing. Liberty from the oppression of sicknesses and diseases. The oppression of anything that is not of God. And he will set us free from this. It's by the Spirit of God. It's the Spirit of God that is working to remove from our lives Anything that is not of God. Anything that comes to destroy us. So the liberty from any boundages is the Spirit. He is faithful to bring us into liberty. So in our communion with the Holy Ghost, we need to be dealing with Him concerning these things, knowing that He is desiring, He is faithful to bring us into liberty more than even ourselves. So that's the third point. The fourth point of the mission in which where we see the, the, the faithfulness of the Spirit is found in 2 Corinthians 3, verse 18. 2 Corinthians 3, verse 18. So, look at this. But we all with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. So the Spirit of the Lord, Holy Ghost, is faithful in causing us to be conformed to the image of Christ. As we behold the glory that is upon the face of Jesus, as we seek for Jesus in the Scriptures, and we are looking at Jesus as presented in the Scripture, Know that the Spirit of God is faithful to cause our spirit man to become more and more conformed to the image of Christ that we are beholding in the Scriptures. Isn't that wonderful? We behold and He transform. And we behold Christ in the Scriptures. And He make that Scripture become real in our spirit man. Who He is. And this is according to Romans 8, verse 29. This is where the Father has predestinated us to be conformed to the image of his Son. That's why it's very important that we understand the focusing on, it's a principle. What we focus on will affect our spirit man. That's why it's better to focus on the things of Christ that allow the Holy Ghost to work in the transformation inside of us to become more like Him from glory to glory. This is wonderful. And we need to take this into account in our communion with the Holy Ghost because He is faithful already to do it. It's just on our side that we are slow to grasp all that God has for us. Let's go to the fifth point, where the Holy Spirit bring, uh, 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 fulfill his mission. He fulfill it faithfully. The fifth point he found in 2 Corinthians 13, verse 14. 13, verse 14, we read, The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost. So, be with you all. Amen. 
Apostle Paul is pronouncing a blessing. And that blessing has three components. The first, the grace, the love of God, and the communion with the Holy Ghost, of the Holy Ghost. And that three are one blessing that we must have. Not just one of them, but the three of them must be activated in us. Not only the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we know that, it's by grace that we are saved and we continue to grow in grace as we continue to grow in the knowledge of who he is. Not only the love of God, who has so loved us in, in first place and he changed not his love. It doesn't depend on anything down here or what who we are or what we are doing. He just loves us. And the communion of the Holy Ghost must be there. And the Holy Spirit is faithful to, to come and commune with us. He's the dweller inside of us. He's seeking to commune with us. And through that communion, he's doing great and mighty things, deep things inside of us. But are we willing to commune with him? And he's faithful in that aspect of the blessing that uh, um, we are entitled of the communion of the Holy Ghost. And the Spirit of God is faithful. He continually he wants to commune with us. And he's faithful to fulfill that mission, to cause us to go deeper, to grow in the communion with him. And we need to take this into account in our heart, in our relationship with him. So that's the sixth point. Uh, the Fifth point, the sixth one is found in Hebrew 9, verse 14. Hebrew 9, verse, verse 14. Uh, speaking in verse 13 about the flesh, the blood uh, of the animals and which can sanctify the flesh. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of a nephew sprinkling the unclean sanctify to the purifying of the flesh, and verse 14, how much more? There is no limit to the power of the blood. Shall the blood of Christ, how much more? You cannot be counted. You cannot finish counting or uh, measuring the power of the blood. How much more? There is no limit. Shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit, that spirit is the Holy Ghost, it's only the Holy Spirit who deal with the blood of Jesus. And it's the Holy Spirit who took Christ to go and at the cross to shed, shed his blood. Who through the eternal spirit offer himself without spot to God. Purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. So we see that the spirit of God is concerned about applying the blood of Jesus Christ, the power of the blood in our conscience, conscience to purge us. The Spirit of God is concerned about that and is faithful in purging us even more than anything that the physical can do. The blood of Christ is very powerful, but it's the Spirit of God that can apply that to purge our conscience. And the Holy Spirit is faithful in that. Hallelujah. So if the blood of Jesus can purge our conscience from dead work, there is nothing else that the, spirit, that the power of the blood cannot purge. So the blood of Jesus, the Spirit of God, will use the blood of Jesus to purge our spirit, soul, and body, our relationship, anything related to us. The Spirit of God is faithful to purge it by the power of the blood. But we need to be conscious and take it into account uh, as we commune with the Holy Ghost, the power of the blood by the Spirit. is faithful to do that. And the last point is found in three verses in Hebrew 3, verse 7, the first verse, where we see the Holy Spirit uh, based on the Old Testament He's, he, will, he will show 
that the one who is spoken about in the Old Testament is Jesus in the New Testament. He, therefore, he will take uh, key points, three key points in, in, this, in this instance, three key points to show that the link between the Old Testament and the revelation of it in the New Testament or show the New Testament and how it started in the Old Testament. He will put the link between the two to show that Jesus is the one who is uh, the one in the Old Testament revealing the New Testament. The Holy Spirit is faithful to do that. So he's saying here that wherefore as the Holy Ghost said, today if you will hear his voice, verse 8, The Holy Ghost, this signifying that the way into the holies, Hebrews 3, 7, Hebrews 3, 7 and 8. So the Holy Ghost is saying in 7 that if you hear his voice today, don't do like the children of Israel in the old time. Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost said, today if you will hear his voice, and verse 8, harden not your heart as in the provocation, in the day of temptation in the wilderness. So the Holy Ghost is saying the children of Israel in the wilderness have tempted God, they provoked God, they have by hardening their heart, even though God was speaking, that the voice that was speaking to them was the voice of Jesus. And if today you hear his voice in the New Testament time, don't do like these who have heard his voice in the wilderness, but have hardened their heart. And also in Hebrews chapter 9, so the Spirit of God is here is faithful, to make us discern the voice of Jesus and help us to not harden our heart and provoke like in before. The second is in Hebrew chapter 9, verse 8, the Holy Ghost will show that through his blood, the shedding of the blood at the cross, the way to the holies that were closed has been opened. So the former tabernacle has been taken away. And there is a new tabernacle where we have the entrance now that is open in the Holy of Holies. So the Holy Ghost, this signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest in the Old Testament. While as the first tabernacle was yet standing, because in that first tabernacle, the entry in the holiest was closed. But now in verse, uh, in verse, uh, verse 9, so in the New Testament, that way has been opened when, uh, the, the, when the blood was shed. The way was opened and we have the access into the presence of God. And the Holy Spirit is faithful to show the difference that the first one, as long as he standeth, we have no access in the presence. And because of the blood, we have access into the presence. So that's the impact, uh, one of the key difference of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and the shedding of his blood. And the third point of the is the covenant. The Former covenant has been removed and a new covenant has been established in Hebrew 10, verse 15 to 17. The former covenant, uh, in the former covenant, whereof the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us. For after that he had said before, this is the covenant that I will make. So that's the new covenant coming. I will make that will be different from the former covenant because of the 
of Jesus. I will make with them after those days, said the Lord. And that new covenant, the word of the Lord will not be just uh, 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 written on tablet, the table of the law, but on the very heart of human being. I will put my laws into their heart. So the coming of Jesus Christ removed the law of the Lord from the table of stones into the heart of men. And in their minds will I write them. And not only that, the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ from the old to the new will change will be so powerful that it will erase the souvenir of the sin in verse 17. And their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Glory to God. So the, the coming of the one who was announced in the Old Testament was not yet visible. He was in shadows. He was in type. He was in symbol. He was present, present in the Old Testament, but revealed in the New Testament. And the power of his uh, revelation, his coming, will even cause the, that which was recorded concerning our sins and the iniquities to be erased. The power of his blood and the covenant is that he is bringing will remove the law from the table of the law into the very heart of man and we will access into the presence his coming will cause us to enter the very presence of god opening the way before us and causing us to hear his voice oh glory and we should not harden our heart. So we need to take this into account that if we are not used, hearing his voice, if we are tormented by the enemy who is lying over us, is because we have not understood the difference. And we need to grasp this. And the Spirit of God is faithful to cause us to hear his voice, to cause us to uh, enter the very presence to cause us to know the word in our heart, the law, and to cause us to understand that the covenant that we have has changed the condemnation that was there in the old time by recording the sin. This new covenant by the blood of Jesus, we go by it, the sins and iniquities are erased by the blood of Jesus. God will not remember them. Glory to God. So we see that the Holy Ghost is faithful in his mission from revealing the, depths, the deep things of, of, of God. is faithful to do that to us. Revealing the mystery of Christ to us is faithful to do that. He's faithful to uh, cause us to be to, to uh, go into liberty. The devil always seeks to oppress, to put in bondage, but the spirit is faithful to, to cause us to live and walk and work in liberty. And the spirit of God is faithful to transform us to be conformed to the image of Christ. He is faithful to bring us into communion with himself. He is faithful to cause the power of the blood to go deep and remove anything that is not of Christ in us. And he's faithful to bring us to the full uh, benefit of the opening of the way in the tabernacle. There is no separation anymore. The full benefit of the presence of God. The full benefit of the fact that we are redeemed by the blood that take away our sins and iniquities that were recorded and condemning. And he calls us to, uh, he's faithful to cause us to have the benefit of hearing his voice and uh, uh, communing 
receiving and agreeing and obeying his voice, not as in the former time. He's faithful. And all this package, the Spirit of God is faithful to bring to us. So, Father, we thank you for the faithfulness of uh, the Holy Ghost. We thank you for all that the mission of the Holy Ghost is based on his faithfulness. And we trust you. We trust the Holy Ghost. We are confident that all that spirit, the Spirit uh, uh, desire or all that is his mission shall be accomplished in us because he's faithful to do it. So we pray that we also may become faithful. We may grow to be faithful more and more like Jesus as we are dealing, or as the Spirit of God that is dealing with us is faithful. Thank you for so doing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now we want to pray for those who want to give their life to Christ. Just say after me this prayer, believing in your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you came on the cross. You shed your blood for me. You gave your very life for me. So today, I ask you to forgive me all my sin and wash me in your blood. I believe that God has raised you from the dead. You have ascended in glory and you are interceding for me. You are coming very soon to take me so that where you are, I may be also. So today I open my heart to you and I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for saving my soul. Thank you for making me a child of God, born again, a member of the family of God. And from this day on, Lord Jesus, I ask you to reveal yourself more to me. I want to know you more and I want to serve you. Thank you for so doing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And we continue to say that what the Spirit of God has started with the mountain of prayer, He will perfect it for the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we see it as a wonderful privilege to uh, see the fulfillment of the prophetic word. Beside the experiences that took us there, uh, we value, we base all things we understand more than ever, uh, ever before. And this is our joy to see the fulfillment of the prophetic word. When God said that he will bring us to his holy mountain, in his house of prayer, at his very altar, where he will accept our sacrifices, all these things that God has prophesied in the Old Testament that was coming to pass. Uh, that are coming to pass, starting with Jesus, and who brought his disciple in the upper room to establish the first spiritual altar that will open the heaven for the outpouring of the Holy Ghost and the transformation of the nations and the propagation of the gospel. Seeing us in that perspective, in that move of the Spirit, is so, so joyful, so fulfilling to see ourselves in this pattern from the old to the new. And we pray that we will continue and more and more and that the nations, the Spirit of God is bringing them. And we pray that all of us, it's our mountain, it's the mountain of our Father heart. So all of us, we are one at this mountain and we put our prayers together to cry, to supplicate, to intercede, to travail, because the multitude of souls who do not know Jesus must come to know him. Hallelujah. And we thank God, we thank God in the name of Jesus Christ that he has positioned us at this point, at this place, where we are uh, in, in the priesthood, operating in the priesthood of Jesus Christ as his priest down here to bring to pass by the Spirit his, his will on earth, the salvation of soul. So we invite you, this is 
for all of us. None of us is excluded. So let us come together. Let us unite as it is written in Psalm 133. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you and the Lord keep you, cause his face to shine upon you, be gracious unto you and give you peace, bless your families and give you the grace to stand at the mountain of prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you.